Hi there, I'm Black Bright broadcasting out the UK. Welcome to my channel. First time you're passing through, you can always subscribe, like and share. Um, today I got an email um, from someone and they wanted me to read it and they wanted me to, they wanted to have my opinion on it basically. And it's about somebody by the name of Ruth Jacobs. Um, she's in the um, newspaper, so um, it's not like I, I have to hide her name. But she is um, now over 90 years old. She is very ill with heart problems. She has dementia. She also had an assured tenancy with a controlled rent. And for those of you who do not, who are not from the UK and who do not know what a sure tenancy is, it's a tenancy that is one of the most secure tenancies you can have. And they don't give them out anymore. So if you lose an assured tenancy, you lose any kind of security because they, you know, landlords have just stopped giving them out. And they're the hardest ones to break. Anyone, anyway, she had an assured tenancy with controlled rent. So she knew how much she'd be paying year after year after year. It would never go up too much. And she was absolutely fine. But like I said, um, last Christmas, she was in Homerton Hospital, which is in East London. And from there, she moved to Acon Lodge Care Home in Clapton. She was very ill and would never return to the New Era estate. I'm assuming that the New Era estate Hold on a minute, because before I say anything, I just want to make sure. I did ask a question. No, I haven't got a response. So um, she would never return to the New Era estate, which I believe is the place she got the assured tenancy from. But while she was in Homerton Hospital, she signed away her assured tenancy. And he believes it was under duress. Now, what I don't understand is he says she was very ill and will never return home to New Era Estate. So I don't know she wouldn't return home why she would keep the assured tenancy and also why he wants to get the flat back. That's a part. But I'm not clear. I did write him back and I did say, you know, if I could have a response before five o'clock. I haven't had a response. So I didn't get that part clarified. But anyway, while she was in Homerton Hospital, she signed away the assured tenancy. Um, Dolphin Living, which is in South West One, are now the new landlords and they've waived a few weeks rent and that's all she got. So I still don't understand whether she, it looks like even though she was in the hospital, and in a care home, she still had her flat, which had an assured tenancy at the time and controlled rent. And then because she went into the, um, and because she went into the home, she probably thought she wouldn't need it. I'm not quite sure how that bit goes. Anyway, Auntie Ruth is paying her own home fees, care home fees, out of her state pension. So it must be a subsidised um, home because otherwise she wouldn't be able to afford it because some of them are like 15... Oh, I have to turn this thing off. Sorry about this. Do not disturb me. Yeah. So... Um, yeah, so... Yeah, so if... She, can't, she has to be living in a subsidised care home to be able to pay for it out of her state pension because state pension is only 600 and something a month, less than 700 a month. And care homes are normally about 1,500 a month. And if they know that you've got a house of your own, they tend to keep you in those care homes longer until every cent of your house is, is finished to pay for the care home. So supposing you've got a house for 200 grand, they will keep you in that care home as long as the money in that house can pay for it. And if it can't, you get booted out of the care home. So I think she's in a subsidised care home um, and she's paying for it out of her pension. But it looks like she wants to go back home now and she can't. Or if she does go back home, 
because it's been taken over by another company, she's going to end up paying the new market rent. So he says, I am trying to get a much better deal. She was promised a new flat, which she signed away when in hospital. So that's what I mean. If you sign away a flat, you've got an assured tenancy. You've got protected rent and you sign that away. There's no way you're going to get that back. Now, he's saying it's under duress. If, she, if he can prove that she signed it under duress and she didn't have a power of attorney and she's in her, you know, I mean, she's over, she's in her 90s. She's over 90 years old. We do know. We don't know what her mental state is like. So if he can prove that she wasn't in the proper state of mind, she may have a claim on her house, but it's going to be very, very difficult. They'd have to prove that that hospital or whoever forced her to sign it or she wasn't in the right frame of mind to sign it. Then she can get that house back. Then she can get her assured tenancy. But they shouldn't be making deals. It should either be get the, her home back with the assured tenancy and the protected rent as it was before she went into hospital. Unless she's going to live like that 111 year old man, you know, just let her live there. So um, I'm not quite sure whose idea it was to put her in the home in the first place. I mean, if she was in hospital and she had her house, why did she end up in a care home? Unless there was no one there to look after her. So, it, you know, I haven't got enough information to kind of comment on that. So um, whoever sent me that email, it's a bit difficult to comment when I don't have all the information. Um, the subscriber is going to go to Hackney Citizens Advice Bureau and Hackney Legal Centre to find out the best way forward or to get a better deal, he's put there. Um, but what's happened is... That lady, Ruth, she is only one of many who are in this estate that's been taken over by private landlords. The thing is, when you um, but get a house, affordable housing house, it's normally given to the elderly, it's normally given to single parents, it's normally given to those who cannot afford to pay market rent. And so you go in there and you get it so much cheaper and you're kind, it's kind of secure. Now, what's happened is, is, is it's in a place called Hoxton. And somebody, some, these billionaires have bought the whole estate. So it's no longer going to be an affordable housing complex. And I'm not quite sure how that works. I'm not quite sure whether it's one of those where people have paid a percentage of the house. Because with affordable housing... They have a scheme where you can pay 25% of the house and you pay the rest in rent. And you can staircase up and pay so much more until you own up to 100%. Or you can put a 50% stake in the house. You, put 50, you take a 50% mortgage out or you put 50, pay 50% in cash if you have it. And then you pay rent on the balance, which is usually not much if you've put 50% in. Or some people may have even put 75% in. It all depends what how the property is advertised at the time. But you do that because you cannot afford market rents and it's a way of being able to live in a home at a you know in a place that you can afford then so what's happened now is that a lot of people who've been in this estate are now in the position where they are going to be evicted if they cannot afford market rent and i think that is very wrong because these people are now in a position where they can't Especially now, they can't afford market rent. How can they afford? That's why they're in the affordable housing complex. And I do not believe that if there's an affordable housing scheme, it, can, it should be sold off to private owners and billionaires who do not understand that concept. And they're saying they've got a year to sort themselves out. A year to find somewhere else to live.
Anyway, Richard Bennion's estate has told Richard Bennion, who's the people who, these billionaires who've bought the estate, has told his tenants in East London that there are more rises to come. One resident, Deborah Cox, described it as social cleansing. It's been bought by one of the Britain's richest MPs, who's bought the estate and hiked up the rent. Tory Richard Bennion, 110 million family firm, that's 110 million pounds, family firm is part of a consortium that snapped up the housing estate and announced plans for a massive rent hike. Now can you imagine living in a home, an affordable housing complex that you can afford and you feel quite comfortable. Some of these people, like that Ruth lady who's, who's 87, and I know she sold, she, she signed over her tenancy, but she's been there for 70 years. You've got people who've been there for 30 years, 40 years. And to them, this is the home that they're going to die in. And then you hear that somebody is going to take over that, that place and they're going to hike up the rent three or four times more than you can afford. Apparently, the one, one of the ladies said her rent was 600 and something pounds a month and it's jumped to 700 and something and apparently it's going to go up three times because they're working towards 2,000 pounds a month for these tenants and this is sterling pounds. I think it's absolutely terrible and it makes people feel so vulnerable. What can you do? Does that mean all these people are going to end up homeless? And the thing is, you think you've got security, but do you have security? Up to 90 households in East London sphere sorry, up to 90 households in East London fear the Bennion's plan to sh charge market rents which will treble their bills. The new era estate in Hoxton has a long history of providing affordable housing and has been home to people for some 70 years. Bloody hell. I know this is happening in London. They're trying to they're trying to get everybody out of London. The thing with these, this is not no kind of thing that hasn't been thought out. It is social cleansing. They want London to be for the rich. And anybody who can't afford it needs to move out of London, go to Northampton, press wherever, out. Because this is what's going to happen overall over all of London in the end, at some point. And then I've heard that Brixton is going to be called East Dulwich or something. They're even changing the name of Brixton. That used to be black people's place. Everybody used to talk about Bl Brixton. Now when you go there, same like Labbert Grove. Now they've, they've come to Hoxton now. I've never been to Hoxton, I've never really heard of Hoxton, but it looks like they're doing the same thing. Social cleansing. Distraught Deborah Cox, 49, who has lived there for 18 years, said this is social cleansing. This has always been a form of social housing and they just want to get rid of us. I have been to the council and I was told we don't have a chance of being rehoused. And you see, that somebody like her, she's 49, She's got no young children. The council don't has to. The council doesn't have to house her, even if she's homeless. They only house people who have got young children, dependent children, and even they have to wait a long time. So these people haven't got a chance in hell. They're going to have to move way, 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 way out. And then how do they know they're going to get a job where they move to? It's a sin, really, it's a sin. Soaring house prices has, have driven ordinary families out of vast swathes of the UK, particularly the capital, 
where the average price of a home rocketed by 18.5% last year. Britain's housing crisis is, is worsened by weak legal protection for private tenants who can be forced out of homes they have lived in for years at a few weeks' notice. Oh dear, that is terrible. My wife is ill and I'm going to lose my effing flat because of you and your mates. That was her husband, Gary, 50. His wife had a seizure during the night brought on by stress. Berkshire MP Bennion is a director of his family's 300-year-old Englefield estate, which owns 20,000 acres from, London, from Hampshire to Scotland. And the thing is, these people don't even need the property. That is the sin. These are wealthy people, billionaires. They don't even need the property. And yet they deem it fit to turf out people who can't afford their stupid rents, their market rents. It's absolutely disgusting. That's what I said, you know, peeps. End times. Things are not looking good. When, when it looks like there's peace and safety, sudden destruction, I can't emphasise that enough. You have to be alert, you have to be present, you have to be spiritually aware, you have to be conscious. You have to see the signs and see what's happening. People don't care, these rich people, they are on the, are, they have a vendetta to get rid of all the working class and the poor. Anybody who can't fend for themselves, they're out to destroy them. If not psychologically, then some other way. They say, and the thing is, they haven't got any concept because they've always, you know, the majority of them have landed on their feet. They haven't had to struggle. They haven't had to work. They haven't got no concept of what it's like to go out there and look for another job and look for a home. They, because they've been spoiled, they think it's easy. Oh, they can just move out of the town and they can go out and they can find another job and they can find another home. That's what they think. They haven't got any concept at all about what it means when you turf people out and tell them after they've lived there for 18 to 70 years, some of them, 70 years to 18 years. And then they're telling you, we can't, you know, we're going to put up the rent three times, knowing that they can't afford it. And what makes it worse, I would have more respect if they were landlords and they needed the money for the house and they needed their home back. I'd have more respect for someone like that than for people who don't need their homes back, don't even need the money, and yet make all of these people homeless, suffer, sick, and do all that kind of stuff. It really is disgusting. His brother Edward Bennion confirmed the family was part of a consortium during the meeting. He also announced plans to refurbish the 1930s home and build more flats on the roof. You see, it's all about making more money. And these 1930s home, I would imagine they're quite large, these homes. They have some houses in Harleston. Honestly, they are, I think they're social housing homes. You wanna see them when you go in there. I mean, they are council, they are bought by either a council or housing estate, but beautiful high ceilings. You wanna see the architecture, the structure, solid homes. It's probably something like that that they want to take back. Feel as though they don't deserve it, they don't appreciate it, they don't, you know what I mean? Edward added, the goal which is something I have had to say to all of you is the fact that the rents will be going to market value. One resident said, when, when Edward Bennion came up to my flat, he actually said that next year, it would be a lot more. He also said, we haven't evicted anybody because when people haven't been able to afford to pay the rent, 
they've moved out. And that's the thing, you see, if people have moved out, they think, you know, that's all you can do. But what else can you do? You move out to where? To Waterloo Bridge? You move out to live on the streets? They don't know where they're moving out to. All they know is that they've got to move out. One resident said, what if I've got nowhere to go? And a second added, you really don't give a shit, do you? Edward promised we are not going to keep anything hidden and claimed there are a number of people who want to buy this block of flats who wanted to knock it down. Any landlord with any moral fibre would consider that these people's homes are not just properties. These people, I mean, I think people should have protection. People who rent homes should have some kind of protection. I think it's a sin that you can live in a home for all those years, paying rent, and that somebody can just turf you out like that. And you've got nowhere to go and no one to help you. Just a victim of circumstance. It's really quite sad, actually. The government seems to think that the market can deliver for people on low incomes, and it can't. The toffs on the front bench don't have a clue how people are living, and they don't care either. Single moms and the elderly, low income, are the people who tend to purchase affordable housing. Since one tenant moved in, the Benyon estate has raised Lindsay's rent from 668 a month to 796. That's an extra £100, over £100. The average cost of a similar two-bedroom flat on right move is nearly 2000 a month. So I can't even imagine what those flats look like. But I believe affordable housing, there should be some protection. There should be. And Ruth Jacobs, she's also written up in the newspaper. Ruth Jacobs, 87, has lived on the estate for 70 years. She said, it is terrible. I got a letter two weeks ago. I don't know what is going to happen next. And that's what I don't, I don't understand with her situation. She got a letter, but she's signed over the tenancy and... I don't understand that anyway. They've been told they have to be evicted by a bailiff together with children before the council will help help them out. And the thing is, I don't know if you have this programme in the U, wherever you are, but in the UK, we have this programme where some people, they haven't paid the rent. It's called, if you can't pay, take it away. And so sometimes you've found people who haven't paid the rent and um, some of them do it deliberately because they want to be housed by the council. And what sometimes happens is, is when the bailiffs show up, they show up about two o'clock in the afternoon. They then have 40 minutes to gather all their belongings. And sometimes they don't know the day the bailiff is coming, even though um, the bailiffs technically are supposed to have told them, but if there are these people who don't read their bills or don't read their mail, they might not know. But anyway, the bailiff shows up. Um, normally it takes them a couple of hours to get all their belongings together. And then the bailiffs wait until they speak to the council. Normally, by the time they talk to the council, the council is closing and those people are on the street for a night if they can't find somebody to put them up in the interim. It's really, and then the housing people now, like the council housing, they used to give you some nice flat, you know, some new flats. I remember when I was young and I had a council house that it was just built, back garden, beautiful, absolutely beautiful. I remember driving down there the other day, it looked like crap. I would never live there now. But the fact of the matter is, is that now they're just putting these people anywhere where there's rats, where there's urine. It's not fit for young children. It's not painted. It's not decorated. And then they give them £50 and say, OK, you can get the paint. You can paint it yourself. That is what they're doing. You're desperate for somewhere to live. 
you have to paint this house, you have to fix it up, and then you live in it. That is what people have to do now if they've got young children. And it's only young people with young children who are going to be housed by the council. Oh dear, I think it's so sad. A mirror investigation with GMB Union earlier this year revealed Benyon's 110 million estate has received hundreds of thousands of pounds in housing benefit, despite the MP attacking the something for nothing welfare estate. So it looks like that the affordable housing had people on there who were unemployed and the and the universal credit or whoever was paying their rent. So they were being um, subsidised. That's what it looks like to me now, reading this. I took this bit from the mirror. So if that's the case, they're not going to get the full market rent because the council, not the council, the universal credit or the... DWP, Department of Work and Pensions, they're not going to pay above a certain amount. So if, if the majority of people on this estate are unemployed and they don't have, and you know, they're dependent on DWP to pay their rent, then I can kind of understand why these millionaires want to buy it and get the proper value for it. Because it's like you've got your house and because you've got a tenant who is not working, you can only charge a certain amount of rent. When if you had an employed person, that person would be able to pay market rent. So they're kind of confined, these people. So they've got these properties that are worth a lot of money. But because the tenants are on Social Security, I might be wrong. I'm not saying all of them, but because that may be the situation for some of them, that is why they're buying it and trying to get the market rent for it. I don't know. Anyway, apparently affordable housing is being destroyed and it's coming from the very top of the Tory party who have no hesitation in dipping into taxpayers' funds as they do it. It's a form of entrapment though because for those people who actually buy I think they've got two types of affordable housing then. They've got the type that people can pay a percentage into. And then they've also got the part where people just rent, I guess. And then it's subsidised with benefits. Finally, any purchaser of the property would need to charge market rates of rent. However, we have given tenants new contracts so they have another year to decide what they want to do. So that's fine, but are they going to be able to afford market rents? i tell you something, if I had to pay market rent, well, I probably could, but I mean... It would be difficult. It would mean a lot of sacrifices. But, you know, not everybody's in my position anyway, so I wouldn't want to pay market rent. I wouldn't want to have to pay market rent. It's just too much. Can you imagine? 2000 a month. Actually, I couldn't pay 2000 a month. That is absolutely ridiculous. But there again, I don't live in London, so it wouldn't cost 2000 we're in the area that I live. But yeah, it's a joke. It's a real joke. So really what they want, it is a form of gentrification. They do want London to be the place for the rich. They've said that for an, a couple of years now. London is supposed to be for the rich. That's why they're hiking up. That's why they're doing all that ultra emission zone where people live, forcing people to get um, more, car, you know, and more expensive cars because if you can't afford to get a new car above a certain level you can't live in London well you can but you're going to be paying that ULEZ fee £10 extra a day so they're making it very very difficult also 
you even in your own home in some places to park outside your own home you have to pay a permit for the year my friend who lives in Halston she has to pay I forget how much it is a year I don't know if it's over it's over a hundred though to park outside her own home so that's what I mean it's it's getting dread peeps but I saw it go talk to you soon